Hi there, my name is David Toms. Today I'm going to read from my memoir Pacemaker, which is out now from Banshee Press. Pacemaker explores the relationship between the body and walking, and the section I'm going to read from is called Patient Biography. Illness invites introspection. My mind is restless. It wanders unaided. It circles back like a loop walk in Crow Wood, Knuckle Van, the Gap Walk in the Nair Valley, Huntian Runda. I am forced to consider constantly the link between body and self. Am I my illness? Is my illness me? Boundaries and definitions shift endlessly. I crossed from Czechia into Poland and Germany in the same looping walk one day. The fixity of such areas is finite, fleeting. To understand yourself as a corporeal entity, to know the limit of your muscles, to appreciate the limitations it places on living unencumbered. At heart, I am a pedestrian. The negative sense of pedestrian as dull, boring and uninspired has been with us since the early 18th century. The idea of the pedestrian as one who walks or prefers to travel on foot reaches back only to the 17th century. The change came quickly. But walking slows things down. Walking is something that provides many things to me. Time alone. Time to think. Exercise. Exercise. Before my teens, I only ever walked with a li limited goal in mind. To get to school, say. To the shop. To meet friends up on the big field to kick a ball around. At 15, I discovered the joy of walking for its own sake. Of walking by myself. I learned to enjoy the continuous motion. I had nowhere else to put all that energy. From our house in along the Cork Road, sometimes up the high path, more often in along by Polbury, John Street, Baron Strand Street, Broad Street, the Quay, by the Mall and Parnell Street. A looping walk. I can taste the cold air of a walk along Barrack Street one good Friday, past my aunt's house and down into town. The walks in and out to Waterford IT for music lessons in the evening. Guitar on my back, Discman in my pocket, Willie Mason, Bob Dylan. I've been walking ever since. There is more than one way to walk, slowly, briskly. We ramble, rove and roam, we meander, we wander, we take constitutionals. Hike, stroll, parade, swagger, promenade, saunter. Troubled, a person might pace a room. Each of those words gives us a way to talk about how we walk that fits the mood and the purpose of walking. I pace the living room with a book in my hand sometimes. The act of walking and thinking melded, melting. We walk through landscapes for the first time and every time after in memory and imagination. Music, songs and poems traverse landscapes real and imagined. O'Neill's March as I went out walking one fine summer's morning. Our highwaymen repair to the mountains with a hundred pounds upon their heads. We go down by the Sally Gardens. She moved through the fair, floating while walking, exalted and exultant. We have our pilgrims in their paths. St. Declan and his well, our own Camino. We are full to the brim of wanderlust, from Mad Sweeney and his peregrinations to Leopold Bloom and his circumambulations of the city. I go walking several times a day, morning and evening. I like to walk on the edges of the day, just before the sun is up or before it draws down over the horizon, to smell dinners coming from houses, the wood stoves lighting in the winter air, cool and crisp, smoky. Even on days when I'm feeling unable for it, when it would be easier not to, I drag myself to go out for even 10, 15 minutes. I have often turned around and come home feeling defeated. Sometimes I push on. Alec Finlay has written in his book, Gathering, about walking and the power of language. How we can invoke the names of places to take mental walks. He reminds his readers that not finishing a walk is as good as finishing one. Distance, incline, length of time travelled don't add up to a good walk. What, ma ma what matters is the pleasure you get from it. The walk from my family home to the local shop on a Saturday for the newspaper is like a small pilgrimage 
undertaken whenever I am in Waterford. The way it wends past Paddy Brown's pub, crossing at the garage, past what used to be an extra vision, and into a shop that will always be Pat's, no matter the name above the door. A walk I can take any time I set my mind to it. This little route I walked as a child, a teenager, student, adult, when I lived in Cork, Prague, Oslo. I need only the names of the places I pass through, a little conjuring trick inside the words and all they contain. Sunrise Crescent, Larchville, Lismore Park, and I am walking that way again. A good walk can be short or long, 10 minutes or 10 hours. A walk for the newspaper can be rich with memory and meaning. In the woods, a walk that is focused on picking berries and mushrooms, or staring at a tree or a brook or reading a book in the wild, is as good as the walk that took a day and covered 40 kilometers. Sometimes it is better, many times more memorable. It beats a path across the hippocampus. Sometimes, in the middle of a walk, I forget my forsaking body completely. Walking, my heart is not weighted stone, but light, air-filled. Blood, flow and feet entwine. What is hard becomes effortless, joyous, a kind of ecstasy. Every time I write about my heart, I write about walking. Every time I write about walking, I write about my heart.